welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. You've probably Very seen much. some of the videos and uh, your name has cropped up quite a few times. We're, we're enormously proud of you. you. You've been with Lincoln for, for years since you were a boy. What, what's been the difference? What, what, what's life like over there? Uh, at the beginning, when, when I started off, it was, it was a bit uncomfortable because it was a new environment for me. I wasn't used to living on my own, living with, with other players and with, people, with strangers, complete strangers, people from all around the world. In Lincoln, we were, all, we were basically all a family. We knew each other from outside of football. So it was getting used to, to socializing with other football players and players that are, are in your uh, shoes. You know what I mean? That they are too, for the same reason as you, to make it professionally and try to make something out of, out of the opportunity they've been given. Did they see you as a threat? Well, that was always... I, I think at the beginning, at the beginning they were more like, ah, he's, this, this one's not going to last very long. Really? I, I always thought of it like that. But, but then when they started seeing me train and I started getting very good comments by the goalkeeper coaches, I, I shook a few heads and they were, they were a bit nervous. Yeah, that I was, I was there. And then I started getting call, uh, callings from the first team. And I started training with the first team a lot, which uh, was in the first, uh, I think, three, four weeks. And I was completely shocked. It's very naive of them to just brush you off from, for just being from little Gibraltar. I can, I can tell you a small story, a quick one. Um, I was up in Glasgow tra with, with Benfica trying to take Fraser Foster from Celtic to Benfica. We spent the week there. And we couldn't broker a deal. Anyway, we, we, we decided, we got instructions from Portugal, come back. So we're on the flight back and I asked the guy from, from Sporting and, and he told me, uh, from Benfica, I asked him, what are the plans of the club? He said, nah, we're going to promote uh, a kid we have from Slovenia. And I went to myself, I looked at myself and said, Slovenia? When have Slovenia produced a top keeper? Yes. So I asked him for the name to keep track of. His name's Jan Oblak. He only lasted one season in the first team, went to Atletico Madrid. And, wow. and for me, he's been the past four years the best goalkeeper in the world, wow. without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. So um, it happens that because of where you come from, they might uh, disrespect you or rule you out, but you've got the attitude, You've got the qualities and you've got a huge opportunity. So make the most of it. It's not easy, it's hard, but you've gone through the first year, which is normally the first. It's, it's like we mentioned it in a few of the episodes. People, they think that becoming a footballer is, is an overnight uh, success, but, but it's not. It's, it's like wanting to be a lawyer or a doctor. You've got to go through a roadmap. So you've gone through like the equivalent of being the first year in uni. But you've always yeah. wanted this, haven't you, Jaylen? You've always wanted yeah. this. This has been, this has been like, I mean, like since you were, I don't know, I would say 12 or 13. I don't know whether it was probably before then, but what I mean is, you know, when it gets serious, you get to 14, 15. It, yeah. It was most yeah. Me, when I was, when I was younger, I would, I would. I started off striker, and you know. No, I, I was striker. just about to say that you used to be a striker, <laughs> and I played football more as like it was a hobby. It wasn't uh, something serious that I really thought I was gonna get fired. And then when I got when I went keeper, and I started playing well, and I started getting called up for GFA. Ever since then, I was like, I want to do this for a living. Like I honestly enjoy it, and I train every single day. Because I, I like keeping fit, so it more or less balances out, you know what I mean? Like, I, I like training, so training football-wise isn't going to be a problem for me. And if I have to train two, three times a day, it would never be a problem, because I honestly enjoy it. Yeah. I didn't know that thing about being a striker, but there's quite a few keepers out there who started off as strikers, and they moved for one reason or another as a keeper, and they stayed there and made and even better career as a, as, a, as a striker. I mean, locally, I can give you one example, Kevin De Los Santos. Um, he was a striker and he could 
I'm not sure. He was a handful. He was a handful because he was an athlete, but obviously made it. And, and one of the players that I've represented in his career, Adrian San Miguel, the, the Liverpool number two, he was a keeper in his young, his, uh, a strike in his younger years. And one day there, there was a, a problem as 12, 13 year old. I hadn't met him yet. There was a problem with the, an, an injury to a keeper and uh, he volunteered. And after the game, the manager said, you know, moving from there. Well, I remember, <laughs> I remember you, you, even when you were a goalkeeper, you remember those under 18 days. Yeah. When, when it, everything was going well, you would, you would bang on to the manager and say, look, we're winning X amount. Put me up front. And, and, I, and to be fair, to yeah, be yeah. fair, I think he's got he's got two from two. I I, I can't remember, but it was always <laughs> it was always trying his hardest. You you know you know. Dear me. Yeah, I, I was I was very competitive. I remember when you were about I've five. Always, six, been... You used to sulk when we put you in goal. <laughs> yeah, I would like it. I would like it. When I was young, all I wanted to do was score the... goals, and now what I want to do is for for the youngsters who are out there. Um, what would you say from moving to to this current setup you have and the professional environment, apart from the loneliness and having to do the stuff for yourself, what has been the biggest challenge um, on a daily basis? Has it been the intensity of of the training? Um, you need you've needed to up yourself in, in, in every single way, mentally, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, match day, preparations the night before. Is, is there any sort of big standouts, virtue which you, which you needed to look out for? For me, as soon as I got there, I had to adapt to the, to the intensity of, the, of like the football that they would play over there. It was a much quicker quicker game. Uh, here in JBA, I could normally take two, three touches and not worry so much about a, a player pressuring me. Whereas in training sessions, matches, wherever, as soon as you take a touch, you're going to have someone pressuring you and you need to know before you get the ball where you're going to pass it to. Yeah. And that's something at, at the beginning of the season, I struggled a lot with. I'm not going to lie, I struggled a lot because in jib, I was never. It wasn't something that I needed to ha um, a strong point to have a good game. You, you know what I mean? Have... You had a lot of time. Exactly, and over there, that's something that they demand players to have, especially keepers, to to be calm on the ball and know what you're gonna do before you even get it. And that's something that I think, as a, as a goalkeeper, I've improved a lot over the, the past year. Yeah, fair point. Uh, just, just one thing. Going back to when you were fourteen, fifteen, uh, Kenneth just asked you, you know, about about being there. But before you got there, the, there's there's those years where you just wonder whether the hard work is ever going to pay off. You know, I mean, what would you say to some some yeah. young aspiring fourteen year old keeper now? Because the, that's the hard part, isn't it? Keeping going when you you just can't see a light at the end of the tunnel. I think uh, at that age, all they, all they could or should do, I think, is enjoy football as much as they possibly do training with a smile, go to training thinking that you're bettering yourself every single day. Because personally, that's what I did. I went to training and you personally know, Neil, that I would love training and I would always push myself extra and extra and extra and not so much thinking I, I want to make it professionally, but for me. I wanted to be the best that I possibly could be in gym. You know what I mean? Training for you was like look watching a kid in a sweet shop. You had two of the yeah. best. You had two of the best keepers to train with, and you always looked like every training session like somebody just opened an amusement park. You loved it. You know yeah. that's that's what came across. And I and I that's learned a lot. Passion. I learned a lot from from Raúl Navas. Yeah, I learned a lot of Raúl. He and I learned from him. I learned more uh, mentality-wise. I I would get very angry with myself when I wouldn't uh, make a save, and like I would, uh, I was young, so I would sulk a bit. And he would talk to me, and I was like, "Look how many goals he scored me. 
it doesn't matter if you if you concede two three goals in a training session. The drills were meant for for the strikers to score. It's just uh, keeping that mentality of like I'm gonna see the next one, and if you don't, I'm gonna see the next one, and that's he's some that's something that's helped me a lot. Uh, the mentality game that he gave me whilst he was in Lincoln, and Lolo helped me a, a lot as well with um, with shot stopping. Like I would. Honestly, I would look at his, like his one-on-ones, the way he would open up, and that's something that I use quite a bit in my in my game now. It's something which we we discussed in the other episodes, uh, which you probably saw, um, are the levels of coaching here. Um, I'm of the opinion that we need to invest in bringing people of. I mean, you just mentioned two. I don't know where Raúl uh, is right now, but perhaps. They've been here. They, they, they are low cost in inverted commas. Uh, you can keep them on yeah. for two or three years and they prepare not just, um, obviously not people like you because obviously you're, you're in, a, in, in, in a bigger place right now, but your equivalent with 15, 14, 16 years old. Um, it's not that we don't have good coaches here, but unfortunately they don't know anything better and that's what we need to import yeah. to spread around the, the the local football family i think i think in one area goalkeepers are lucky and not lucky i mean if you look at i mean, I mean for example i'd go to a training session and you see the goalkeepers train and they're like they're set away on their own and they're really intense and then you've got the the rest of the team training and I always think when I see it that the goalkeepers are actually better off than the better off than the rest of the team because they get a lot more one-on-one training. Um, the only problem yeah. is only one of those keepers can play, so that's the, that's the downside. There's three of you getting spectacular training, but there's only one of you that's ever going to uh, be able to show it. Yeah, that's that's what happened with with Miguel Miguel, the the goalkeeper coach of Lincoln. He he gave me such a he, the amount of time that we stayed training. He prepared me so well that when I started um, getting minutes with Lincoln in the first division, I I was more calm than anything else. I made a few errors every now and then, which I think was normal. I was 16, 17 when I was just starting to get in the in the team, but I was. I, I felt comfortable playing uh, under Lincoln. It was never like uh, a lot of pressure on my shoulders. Uh, I, I felt confident about myself. That six month on loan at Europa Point, which was also in the, in the Premier League, you were in the first division that, that year. So it wasn't your first time in the, in, the, in the top division, was it really? No, it wasn't. I, I, had, I had played every, I think, every single game for for Europa Point as soon as like the, the loan um, happened and as well that helped me a lot it gave me it it made me realise the rhythm that the first division was at how I had to improve my game what I needed to work on and that I would train with Lincoln I think it was three or four times a week and once with them uh, to assure the tactics of the game and those uh, out of those four training sessions, I think Miguel would go two or three times and he would see my games and we would work on uh, the stuff that he needed to improve. And that's something that always helped me. If other, if other keepers are sitting there not playing, I, I think it's well worth their while going to a, a lower league team, a lower position team, and at least playing number one and getting all those Get minutes to be able to show what they can do. What I'm saying is that I, I think that, that that six months at Europa Point was probably, you, you, you might not know it now, but what it did for you the, the, the year after when you actually got to keep for Lincoln, it, it might have helped you along the way. I'm not saying it, it did or it didn't. Yeah, It, it was an experience. It, certainly, it, worthy, it anyway. certainly did. Yeah, it was, it was a very good experience. Um, but something that I have to, something that I always kept in my head was that I was to to learn. Like, if Lincoln wouldn't have given me the opportunity to play Premier, I would have gone to to whatever other team that would have played me. And I think that's that's a mistake that a lot of players make, and they go to teams for for money. And at the end of the day, the amount of money that we're earning in Jib is not 
enough to to like sort your life out. So, so I exactly would say enough. go to a team that you're gonna get minutes, and and just start from there. And maybe one day you could get the opportunity to play for the big clubs again and earn money there instead of putting yourself in uh, in a top club, not get minutes. Fine, you're getting paid, but you're not playing and you don't progress as a player, and you never ever make it to the first team. So you you've been back now for quite a long time. You got any? Have you got any uh, any set dates to go back, or is it just still, still all up in the air? At the moment, it's still all up in the air. We was we were given like a a date that we might be able to go back, and that date has already passed. So I honestly think that they're just going to let the B team and C team players that are not needed for the first team at the moment. They're just going to let them um, spend time with their families until we are called back for, for pre-season. And I think pre-season this year is going to be earlier than last year. Mm-hmm.